The short answer is probably. I'm quite certain that most people don't have the innate ability to succeed at League of Legends, especially since the game gets more and more complicated with every single champion release and systems overhaul. Most people have a lot of reasons why they aren't performing in their games, from everything to their teammates, Riot, the meta, Freak, and other extenuating circumstances. But what if there's a reason that people aren't even taking into consideration? What if they're actually just naturally bad at League, or video games in general? I'm going to be exploring this question in a trilogy for the next couple of weeks, discussing what exactly is talent, how does it manifest in League of Legends, and how do you climb if you're not talented? So for this first video, I'm going to give you guys a crash course on talent, so we can get the basic definitions and functionalities out of the way before you figure out if you're going to be hard stuck for the rest of your life. If you guys are new here, my name is Rabies, and I'm just a talentless guy who started in bronze and managed to crawl my ass up to diamond. If you guys want to follow the rest of this trilogy and deep dive into the role of talent within your own league journey, like and subscribe. So to start up, what exactly is talent? Talent can be a nebulous word to define because sometimes people understand the context of when it's being used but can never quite pinpoint what it actually fucking means. Like when someone uses the word talent, we all know what they're trying to say but try defining it and it can become a bit of a convoluted shit show. Talent is simply a human inclination. It's a characteristic. This inclination is what enables individuals to advance better than others in certain specific skills. It's important to understand that this characteristic is often spun in a positive light for it to be considered a talent. Say for example, you're a fucking psychopath who can ruthlessly murder people without batting an eye. Even though that's an abhorrent characteristic and society will shun you for it, in terms of being a hitman, you be considered quite talented. That's why I frame talent simply as an inclination of your genetic makeup. The positive context in which you decide to use that inclination labels it as a talent or not. I believe talent has three components to it. It can manifest in three different ways. Individuals can have any combination of these components to be considered talented. Number one, the head start. This is the most common form of talent and the one that people are most used to. The head start means you sort of spawn at a higher level at a particular skill compared to the average person. An easy example would be, say, you're in the fifth grade or something. Everyone else is like five feet tall and you're five seven. You'd be considered more talented if you're applying for like the elementary school basketball team or something. In league terms, it means that if you and say a friend play the same number of games and they finish their first rank split in bronze two and you finish your first rank split in gold three, you'd be considered more talented in the head start department. Oftentimes, the head start is something you are naturally predisposed to. A taller person is more talented when it comes to basketball, but maybe not so talented when it comes to like soccer or dodgeball. This is where my initial definition of talent is important to internalize. Talent is simply a neutral characteristic, whether it's overt or not. It's all about the context that it's being used in that determines if it's actually a talent for that particular skill or not. This is very important guys, I want you guys to understand this. Number two, the growth factor. This is essentially the rate of progression within a particular skill. In my experience, this often comes hand in hand with Head Start, but not necessarily. People that are naturally good at something tend to also get better at it faster than regular people. This creates a snowballing effect where, with enough time and effort, they permanently stay ahead of others and their only real competition are other talented folks. Now, I can speak for this personally when it comes to writing. When I came to America at the age of 7, I couldn't speak a lick of fucking English, let alone write it. After about a year or two in the States, around the time when I was in like 5th or 6th grade, we started having writing intensive projects in our classes. By this time, I was fluent in English and I could write decently, but with constant exposure to all the writing classes, I discovered that I had quite an aptitude for writing. Even though I started at the same, maybe even lower than my classmates, I quickly overtook them. I want to try and describe the feeling of having the growth factor talent. So most people follow a set of protocols to try and get good at something. For writing a basic essay, it's like having an intro and a conclusion paragraph and three body paragraphs supporting your arguments. For League, it's basic shit like CSing, positioning, not tilting, and playing your champion properly. When I was writing, I could feel like I could break the rules and get away with it. I could almost feel what sentence would do really well and make the paper flow properly, even though I didn't necessarily adhere to the standards that were being set by my teachers. Growth factor is essentially a natural intuition into a specific skill. It's different from Head Start because it's not necessarily so overt. You're not better than everyone when you start out. Rather, it's the ability to see special nuggets of insight that other people can't see. Say you're playing a game, right, with everyone else, and you randomly start getting hints on your screen that doesn't appear for most other people. That is what the growth factor is. By comparison, Head Start would mean that you start at a higher level or further along in that game than most other people. Keep in mind that learning is a separate skill by itself, and that's not what we're talking about here. People that are good at learning can pick up on things quite fast by using a standardized set of procedures to learn and then use the things they've learned repeatedly. 
what we're discussing here is, again, the human inclination towards a particular skill. One that helps you pick up on hidden details behind a standard procedure and learn it at a much faster pace than other people. Number three, the ceiling. This one, I don't really see get talked about much, but another facet of your talent is not how good you are at the start or how fast you progress, but how good you can eventually get. This one hardly comes into play because most people don't stay on the grind long or hard enough to experience anything resembling their ceiling. To quickly illustrate this point, let's take two European ADCs, Sven and Upset. Both are very good ADC players. Between the two of them, they have seven first team all pros. They've been among the upper echelons of Western ADCs since their debut, and they're very, very, very famous for their work ethic. Sven is significantly more decorated, having won six titles, three as an ADC and three as a support, and is the first player ever to win a North American and a European title. He has a combined 10 all pros, five first team, three second teams, and two third teams. Upset, on the other hand, is not decorated. Despite having played for like eight years now, he doesn't have a single title yet. He even ranks below Sven in the all pro honors with seven to Sven's 10. Now, with that being said, anyone that's watched him play can easily figure out that Upset is actually the better ADC. He's a much better later, his team fighting is slightly more crisp, he doesn't make as many mistakes, and he performs well despite the lackluster rosters he's had for most of his career. While both of them started out at the same level and both of them have a highly commendable work ethic, Upset is generally the better AD carry. Let's take the league analogy again. Your friend finishes their first split at bronze 2 and you at gold 3. Now let's say that both of you really love the game and grinded it religiously for the next 3 years. Assuming games played are the same for argument's sake, you finish in diamond 2 while your friend finishes in grandmaster. Your friend's ceiling is simply higher even though you played the same number of games and you even had a head start on him. This one can be quite difficult to understand because it's the most invisible and almost like fatalistic out of all the talent components. Your ceiling has to do with capacity. How much workload can you handle? How fast can you recover? How many things can you keep track of simultaneously? No matter how much of a head start you might have or how fast you might learn things, you'll eventually get to a point where your progression stalls to a crawl because you're just not capable of carrying a lot of workload. While it's interesting to learn this, 99.999% of people don't have to worry anything about their ceiling. Most of us never get good at anything to the point where we can even come close to our potential, simply because of the ludicrous amount of hours it would take to get there. Now it makes sense for pro athletes like Sven and Upset to worry about this kind of stuff, but for us hobbyists, it's not really much of a concern. All this to say, talent can manifest itself in different different ways. It's important to remember that talent, at the end of the day, is simply a characteristic that's positive and helping you master a certain skill or endeavor. Thank you for staying with me for this video guys. In the next video, we'll discuss how talent might manifest itself in League of Legends. There's different types of talent and different ways it can manifest itself in League of Legends. So if you guys want to see that video, make sure to like and subscribe. Your next stop from here will be these two videos. They'll further inform you guys about the role of talent within your league journey. The first one is about your own gaming background and how it might have given you some skills that might have made you better or even worse at League of Legends when you started out. The second video is a crash course on what the rank ladder is actually testing. So you can actually climb even if you don't have talent for gaming in the first place. I'll see you guys there and remember, anyone can get diamond.